say amen in Jesus' name. Your power will reach them wherever they are in Jesus' name. Your mighty power as of old for you remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your mighty hands will reach them wherever they are listening in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, I pray that as we look into your word, you open our eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus. And your word will bring healing and deliverance to us in Jesus' name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Confirm your words in every life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let someone shout hallelujah. 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 We bless the name of the Lord. We give him all the glory. We give him all the honor. We give him all adoration. He alone is worthy. We bless him for all that he has been doing. We bless him for all that he is doing. And that which we will continue to do. Uh, last week, we were looking at the topic in his presence, part one. And I'll be running on. I'll be concluding on the topic in his presence, which will be part two this morning. And we were meant to understand that in his presence there is fullness of joy. And one of the things we enjoy in God's presence is the joy that brings, is the joy that we receive from his presence. We were meant to understand that it is the joy of the Lord that is the strength of the believers. And the only way, the only place we can get the joy of the Lord is in His presence. Anything outside the presence of God, there is no joy. As we can see in this moment, in this era, where many people lost their joy. But in this era, in this time, in this season, it is in the presence of the Lord that we can find joy. It is in His presence that we can find joy. It is in His presence that we can find joy. So, dearly brethren, I want us to understand this, that in His presence there is fullness of joy. By the special grace of God, we'll be looking very quickly before we go to pray, because this time we are going to pray this moment we are going to pray and I pray that as you commit your heart and your life to God as you commune with God the Lord will answer you in Jesus name in his presence part 2 we will be looking at the rules that guide those who carry God's presence we will be looking at two rules Guided by those who carry His presence. Everybody who carry God's presence are gui is guided by two rules. Every man, every woman, every soul, every human being who carry God's presence is guided by two rules. And by special grace of God, we'll be looking at these two rules they are guided by. Two principles, two things, two philosophies, two truths they are guided by. And it is this truth that they walk in accordance with. And these truths are there in the Word of God. Everyone who carries God's presence does not joke with holiness. Every carrier of God's presence does not joke with holiness. Holiness is not just an attribute of God. Holiness is, the, is what encompasses God Himself. Holiness is the is, is God Himself. That is why God cannot afford to behold iniquity. 
know that oh he, he, he does not like iniquity only but his nature his his his, his composition cannot afford to be on iniquity that is why sinners cannot behold God sinners cannot behold his presence until he does what until he cleanses himself until he actually cleanses himself God is so holy so holy so holy that he cannot behold iniquity so whoever that will be carriers of God's presence do not joke or be not do with holiness holiness is not optional some people think that holiness is optional some people think that they cannot be holy some people think that well when I'm ready I'll be holy holiness is not optional brethren is never optional holiness as long as we want to be carriers of God's presence it is compulsory to be holy as long as we want to be carriers of God's presence God's nature of course since holiness is part of God's nature is God's nature therefore it is compulsory for us to be holy but if you don't want to be carried out of his presence, you may not be holy. But for you to be carried out of his presence, you must be holy. Holiness must be taken with a great priority. Holiness must be taken with a great priority. What exactly is holiness? It says, 
the priest of this world comments and add nothing in me. That's Jesus speaking there. He said, The priest of this world, when he came to him, he had nothing in him. Meaning that we need, when we are carriers of God's presence, there is nothing the devil will have against us. The only thing he will be making, he will be that we gradually lose God's presence. He will have something to say against us before God. The prince of this world went to Jesus, but he did not find anything against him. In the same manner, we need to cherish holiness as someone who wants to be carrier of God's presence. As someone who wants to be carrier of God's presence, we must live by this rule, the rule of holiness, the rule of holiness, the rule of holiness. So, it is very, very important that we protect our garment from being stained. How can we protect our garment from being stained? When we disobey. Verse 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It's a common verse that we do read. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship at righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion at light with darkness, and what concord at Christ with Belial, or what path at he that believeth with an infidel. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Underline that. For ye are the temple of the living God. For God, has, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will build their God and they shall be my people. Now listen to this verse 17. 
take note of this verse 17. We are talking of separation. Verse 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. This is God saying, This is God speaking here. Wherefore, come out from among them, says who? Says the Lord. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Can you see that? That verse 17 is God is telling us, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. God wants us to be separate. In fact, there is no gain saying whosoever that wants to be carriers of God's presence, whosoever that wants to be carriers of God's presence must carry separation. Separation from who? Separation from what? Separation from anything that sought as distractions. Psalm 91 verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Meaning that whosoever that dwells in the secret place of the Most High is a carrier of God's presence. Kabali Bramoshi Takata. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever that has been stealing away the presence of God from you, hindering you from enjoying God's presence, is destroyed in Jesus' name. Whatever that has been causing you not to be carriers of God's presence, I declare it in the name of Jesus. They are destroyed in Jesus' name. They are destroyed in Jesus' name. Separation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Separation is another factor, another rule that are guide that is that those who carry God's presence are guided with. Don't forget, we are talking about two rules guided by those who carry God's presence. We are talking about two rules guided by those who carry God's presence. Number one is holiness. Number one is holiness. Number two is separation. Separation. Those who carry God's presence do not joke with their secret place. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't joke with your secret place if you want to be carriers of God's presence. Because if you look at our, the great men of God, those who are dead, those who, were, who, have been, who have died and those who are still living, they do not joke with their secret place. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our past, perfect example, Jesus Christ, who is our perfect example, did not joke with his secret place when he was on earth. Therefore, those who carry God's presence do not joke with their secret place. A secret place is anywhere. You and God commune together. Note that. A secret place is anywhere you and God commune together. That is the number one secret place we have is our heart. Your number one secret place is your heart. You know, the heart is very deep. It's a secret place. What you are thinking, nobody knows. What you are thinking against anybody, nobody knows. What you are thinking for anybody, nobody knows. The heart is the number one secret place. However, we need a physical place. We need a physical place where we can go to pour our heart to God. And as well as we hear from Him. We need a physical place. You can choose a very, you can choose a, an uncompleted building to stay there. You can choose a nearby bush. You can choose a place that you know that no destruction will hinder you. The secret place. We need a physical place where we can go to commune with God. So, that is the secret place. Those who desire to carry God's presence must always separate themselves. One, 
from world leaders. They must always separate themselves from world leaders. That is what you can see in 2 Corinthians that we read. Chapter 6, from verse 14 to 18. When it got to verse 17, he said, God said, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Can you see that? We will be carriers of his presence. We need to separate ourselves from godliness. Those who are carriers of God's presence, I want you to take very well great and great men of God. Great, great men of God. They do not entangle themselves with godliness. They do not entangle themselves with all forms of godliness. Because godliness is against God. The Bible says it in the book of James. said that godliness is enmity against God. Whosoever will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So we must separate ourselves from godliness. Whosoever desires to carry God's presence must separate himself from godliness. Another one, you must separate yourself. I must separate myself. We must separate ourselves from distractions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must separate ourselves from distractions. To be carriers of God's presence, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of things happening in this world that are what distracting. That is why we need to separate ourselves, lest we get distracted. We must separate ourselves from distractions. What are distractions? Anything that can make you to lose the presence of God. Anything that can get you disconnected from God is a distraction. So we must separate ourselves from it. Name it anything that can get you disconnected. Everything that is getting you distracted is hereby destroyed in Jesus' name. From now on, you will no longer be distracted in Jesus' name. The presence of God will overshadow you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to separate ourselves from distractions. Lastly, we need to separate ourselves from all kinds of sins. We need to separate ourselves from all appearances of evil. Anybody who will be carriers of God's presence in this end time, in this revival time, anybody who will be carriers of God's presence must separate himself from all kinds of sins, from all appearances of evil. Not evil per se, but all appearances of evil. That's what even the scripture tells us. We want to be carriers of God's presence. You need to be guided by these two. Holiness and separation. To be carriers of God's presence, you need to be guided by these two rules. You need to be guided by holiness. Holiness is not optional. Holiness is compulsory for whoever that wants to be carriers of God's presence. Holiness is not optional. No, holiness is not a necessity. Holiness is compulsory for everyone who wants to be carrier of God's presence. As number two, that you and I, every one of us, must be guided with if we want to be carriers of God's presence is separation. Separation. You must separate yourself. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from 14 to 18, the verse 17 says, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Says the Lord, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Separation, separation, separation. La paroche now we want to go into the, into the moment of prayer. Into the moment of prayer. 
you may be listening to me. For those who are listening to me, you have never given your life to Christ before. Or you have given your life to Christ. But one way or the other, at a particular juncture, you miss it. And you want to come back to God. Tell it to God. God, have mercy upon me. In one way or the other, you have missed it. Because no sinner can be a carrier of God's presence. Tell it to God to have mercy. Tell it to God to have mercy upon you. That you want to begin at a fresh. You want to begin at a fresh within. You want, to, you, want, you want to be carriers of His presence. And you may be there. You are truly born again. But you are always being distracted by one thing or the other. God wants to set you with you. God wants to help you. God wants to assist you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are major five prayer points. I want you to pen it down. Major five prayer points. I want you to pen it down. Pen it down. And you are going to pray it. After which, I will give a final prayer. And we are done. Five major prayer points. After which, I will give a final prayer for those who are sick, for those who are sick in the body, either spiritually or physically, for those who have one disease or the other, for those who have one problem or the other, either in their eyes, either in the body, either any part. Even it may be your children, it may be your siblings, your relatives, your friends. As I pray from here, the mighty hands of God will locate you in the name of Jesus. This major five prayer points, I want you to pray it. You can also pen it down as we pray. Because we will be praying from here. And after we finish praying, we're going to pray for about, about 10 minutes. We pray this prayer for about 10 minutes. Now, this is a five prayer point. You may choose to use two two minutes for each prayer point. That makes it ten minutes. We use it ten minutes to pray to God. Number one, Father, I thank you for the word that you have sent to me this morning. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word you have sent to me this morning. You are going to appreciate God for the word He has sent to you. Number two. Lord, Father, Lord God Almighty, as I live in accordance to your word, please help me never to default, never to default your word in Jesus' name. Father, as I live in accordance to your word, please help me never to default your word in Jesus' name. I repeat, Father, as I live in accordance to your word, please help me never to default your word in Jesus' name. Number three, Father, I separate, I come out and I separate myself from everything that has been denying me from being a carrier of your presence in Jesus' name. Father, I come out out and I separate myself from everything that has been denying me from being a carrier of your presence in Jesus' name. Lastly, I repeat. Father, I come out and I separate myself from everything that has been denying me from being a carrier of your presence in Jesus' name. Number four, Father, please help me to forever be a carrier of your presence in Jesus' name. Father, please help me to forever be a carrier of your presence in Jesus' name. I repeat this lastly. Father, please help me to forever be a carrier of your presence in Jesus' name. Number five. Father, make me a channel through which people become carriers of your presence in Jesus' name. Father, make me a channel through which people become carriers of your presence in Jesus' name. Father, make me a channel through which people become carriers of your presence in Jesus' name. It is one thing to be a carrier of God's presence. It is another thing to be a channel 
through which people become carriers of God's presence. That is the that's the reason for that number five prayer point. The Father made me a channel through which people become carriers of your presence in Jesus' name. Now can we begin to pray to the Lord for ten minutes? Ten minutes. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help me, my God, help me, my Father, in the mighty name of 
signs and wonders. My God, my Father, the God of all flesh, Jehovah is your name. You are God, and that is your name. Your glory you will not share with anyone. Your children have lifted up their hands to you. Oh, 